Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tim, and welcome to Tim Talks. The show that's only partially a show, but really it's just an excuse for me to talk to my very talented friends. And speaking of talented friends, I have another one here with me today. He's the art director over at Rooster Teeth Animation, this hand that strokes the pen, Patrick Rodriguez. Welcome, oh sir. God. I know, I'm Our just spawning things. over here. <laughs> hey, listen, it takes a master for a hand because I tell you this, hey, I can't do what you do. I, no, dude, as much as I stroke, it takes a lot of practice, trust me. Like, we'll get in a lot of we'll, steps. We yeah. will definitely get into all of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, how are you doing on this fine Sunday afternoon? I am doing just perfectly fine. I have um, cuddled up with a nice, cool glass of water. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I have iced tea. Because you can take the boy oh, out of Georgia, but you boy. can't take the George out of the boy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I have a tea pitcher that I bought <laughs> when I first moved to Austin. It is one of those um, KitchenAid tea makers that's, you know, the self-contained stand. Have you not seen this thing? No. It's what the hell? It's brilliant. I'll show it to you next time you come okay. over. It's, right. it's basically a self-contained pitcher and stand. The stand actually dispenses the tea. You put the tea bags on the top of it. You put pour water into it, and then tea drips into the pitcher, yada, yada, yada. But the thing that I love about this, and I showed it to Brian when we moved, um, was that you can actually pack this tea pitcher on top of itself. It's very, it's very well designed. You take the stand. You put the pitcher on top of the stand. The pitcher is perfectly sized to go around the stand. And then you take the, uh, the top, and you can actually arrange the top right on top of the uh, bottom of the pitcher because it's perfectly sized to fit. And then it all just is one little self-contained package. Like, I love that you're going, this is so cool, check this shit out. It's, it does a stack, it's like a Lego. And I'm over here going like, what kind of lazy son of a gun? <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. And I have no, to- It's not even just towards you, it's like, we're, America's going to hell. <laughs> it's going to hell what? in What? Because there's an easy way to make pi a tea? Yes. What do you have against tea? I have nothing against tea, but I have apparently something against uh, creativity and making new gadgets to make life easier. <laughs> so, now that we have gone wildly off topic to start Abs the show, um, <laughs> give us uh, those who may be unfamiliar with who you are or what you do. Give us uh, a little bit of a Reader's Digest version of what oh. you do over at the company. A little rundown, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so um, right now I'm kind of the acting art director of uh, RT Animation, mm -hmm. and so and concept artist as well. So any time that we need to figure out the look of a show, how something is supposed to properly look, you know, within the different you know animation shows that we have, then people come to me and they're like, "Does this look right? Does this look right? Does this look right?" And I go, "Yay!" or "No!" or "You should be fired." <laughs> <laughs> We do that. <laughs> no, no, absolutely that's, that's not. Cool. Our team, they're freaking talented as hell. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, and then I create art, and I also do a show called Quick Draw uh, for sponsors on our site. And yes, sir. Yeah, it's, it's actually my interview show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of the uh, another kind of I would say antithesis, but that's literally the wrong word. Um, it's sort of a parallel to this show where you sit there and draw something for somebody and interview them the way that you want to and sit there and get drunk and have fun. It's the show that kicked Bernie off the air. <laughs> Proudly say that. <laughs> Give us the story. <laughs> so, um, Bernie had the show, this interview show that was going on, you know, within the company where he was just doing the same thing, you know, we are right now. Yeah. Just talking to other personalities of people in the company. Um, game time. Right? Game time. Yeah. yeah. Where he would just have somebody else and they would play a game and then they would just talk. Yeah. I came along and I was like, I want to do a show like that, but where I draw and I interview people and, you know, not, you know, people that also aren't as known on the camera. Mm -hmm. We should get them on too. So, he stops making his show. Uh. I didn't know that. I was just like, eh? <laughs> you were just oh. like, what? I, can we not make a thing? Is there not room enough for the both of us? Yeah, and so somebody had asked him, I believe on Twitter, hey, whatever happened to game time? And he was just like, oh, no, I didn't see the need for two interview shows. So uh, Quick Draw took over game time. And it was just like, <laughs> and he never said this to me. And so right. I, just, I suddenly got this flood of just tweets coming at you me. <laughs> All eyes were suddenly on you. Child, you're the worst. And I was just like, what the shit happened? <laughs> I love that everyone has their own internet voice. Yeah. 
And it's all usually about the same. It's really nasally, kind of a little bit higher pitched than their normal voice. Well, and it usually is accompanied by bald fist hand movements. <laughs> um, I'm so mad about this thing on the internet. Me. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, he didn't tell me that. So the next day after I got that bunch of vitriol i was just like what the fuck did you do <laughs> <laughs> i love that i love that when you just get to walk around a corner and go what did you do <laughs> to bernie freaking burns <laughs> right <laughs> you gotta love it so yeah no uh, but has he has he been kind enough to at least grace you, uh your show with his presence oh he, he's been wanting to be on i just haven't given it to him yet oh i got you that's been you, you guys are just like no not yet <laughs> you get to sit over there and wait. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So you've had a whole bunch of people from the company. Uh, give it like brief list of some of the better ones. Uh, <laughs> I say better ones. That was <laughs> some of the uh, talented ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Even then. <laughs> uh, no, I. Uh, I think I've only had like 14 episodes out because it's a monthly show. Right. Um. So I think I can go down this in order. Uh, it was. Miles, Carrie, Barbara, Lindsay, not in order at this point. I'm just saying yeah, yeah. names. <laughs> Lindsay, Kyle, Josh O, Josh, you're Josh. Mm hmm. Flanagan. <laughs> God damn it. There, there's too many I fucking hope people. He doesn't get a show. <laughs> he will come after me with a pitchfork. Ah, uh, it's like he did Gus. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Um. God, there was a few more. Oh, Michael, Gavin, Ray, Ryan. Fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. um, Gray. <laughs> and I believe that's it for right now. For right now. I think. But next up, I haven't announced it yet. I, it could be said. There's no need. I don't really care. I mean, but you can by all means. I, I, but if you don't want to. I say it on the stream too, so I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> next up is supposed to be Jeff. Jeff Ramsey. Oh, that'll be a lovely treat. I am in fear because he's <laughs> just hounding me since I started the show that he's really? wanting to be on. And I didn't know this at first, but yeah, I, you get it after a while of him just being like, when are you going to put me on? And I'm just like, whenever I fucking have time to put you on. <laughs> <laughs> What? Listen, whenever you want to just like happen to drop by, no one here is going to say no. Yeah. So one night he like finally came over to me like I'm not gonna say it word for word because it's pretty rude, but uh, it basically amounted to you need to put me on the show because I really yes sir on it and so I was just like there's a lot more words in that trust me but <laughs> it's like all right you're next you can have next so Jeff will be next on Quick Draw and awesome. knows what he'll want me to draw <laughs> you'll find out I'm sure you will. Mm -hmm. So you've been at the company now, uh, what, three, going on three years? Uh, yeah, two and a half, three years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what did you do when you first started? When I first started, I was just straight-up concept artist. Uh, it was on Ruby. Oh. And the producer at the time had snatched me up and had noticed um, other people in the company had told her that I was doing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just happened to be doing, like, little postcards, pieces of art, and T-shirts and stuff at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Random. So some of the, like, the helping John Reisinger type stuff. I was before John. I was before. Oh, ri yeah, John, really? Yeah, for me. Ooh. Fuck you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is all before I really got involved with the company either. So, I mean, True. my timeline is all kinds of screwed up. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that shit. <laughs> uh, but you're not actually from the Austin, but you're not from far away, like San Antonio, right? San Antonio is so just about two hours south of here. Uh, and so then how did you make the trip over? That was just a spur of the moment kind of thing. I had reached a point where I was just like, looking for a job in the creative field again, and there is nothing that I wanted to do in San Antonio. Absolutely nothing. Like, maybe right. a graphic design, but I'm just not that technical thinker. Constantly. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On. And so I was just like, there's studios up in Austin. I should move to Austin. Do I have any friends in Austin? I do. <laughs> I mean, like, I totally get it. It's one of those things where not only are you trying to do what you're already trying to do, but you're doing it in a, well better city oh yeah no 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 like the move up to austin gave me a bunch of opportunity right quick like mm -hmm. it wasn't in a studio no like one of my first jobs here was at uh blizzard's uh customer service deal they have here 
um, they have their whole center here where their DMs are at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that was my first, like, job job here, I believe. Um, hmm. And that was cool. Do, like, doing more concept art and stuff? No, 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 not there. It was all the call center stuff. So I had to be the guy to tell you, no, we did not steal your gold. You have been blocked out because you are from such and such place and you have hacked this account. I mean, here's the thing. There's a built <laughs> full of people. A building that... That is... That is just soul-sucking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, I've done regular call centers where you get, like, medical-type stuff. And you're dealing with people who are sick and, you know, have sob stories, yada, yada, yada. That's just pure internet rage that you're dealing with on a constant basis. Uh, it's people that have just... They have just disconnected from, like, all things human interaction at that point. Yeah. On the internet. And so they're just, like, giving it all to you, saying that you're the one that touched me when I was 18 and older. Yeah. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> well, nice save. Nice save. Nobody caught that at all. But, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you're having to deal with all the normal stresses of, like, call center bullshit. And then on top of that, the internet trollitude and the disconnect from any sort of, like, empathy or compassion yeah, no. that goes along with the anonymity of the internet. Oh. Like to you, these people are just a username. Yeah. No, not even worse than that. You are now a part of a corporation that is now the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> and they <Yeah>. hate you. <laughs> mm. They want to bring you down in a very, very specific way. Um, but yeah, so then, uh, that, getting out of that. Yeah. Getting out of that. And it was, it was funny because like when I first got my, like, first like official assignment at Rooster Tooth it was like for a shirt um I want to say it was for the X-Ray and Vav shirt mm. um how very incidental yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that that thing never went anywhere trust me <laughs> but it was funny because I'd be walking around Blizzard or whatever and I would see guys on their computers on their breaks watching Achievement Hunter stuff mm -hmm. and I would just but I wasn't watching at the time so I would just kind of chuckle and then just kind of walk by because I would be like e yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, those idiot guys play video games again. <laughs> Were you a big, like, video watcher? Uh, hmm. Not really. Uh, I was just getting into more of the freelance kind of stuff. Hmm. And, like, doing my own thing and getting really into comics and webcomics. Because that was my first, like, uh, real, quote-unquote, career step. Like, I sought that out as a, like, viable thing. I was like, oh, I want to get into webcomics because I love comics. I've been doing it for a while, blah, 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 blah. And this would have been during that big comic webcomic boom time exactly. where Penny Arcade was really getting yeah, established. Yeah, a, a, and uh, PvP, a lot of just huge, huge things um, just around that era. And, like, I was perfect. I was in college for that. And mm -hmm. so it was just like, <clears throat> got you. And, yeah. you know, and all these beautiful comics coming out of it. And it was just like, you can give them away for free and people will just tell you shit. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, mostly, but whatever. Um, the feedback does, in fact, come one uh, way or the damn other. Yeah, yeah. you, you have no control of that. No. <laughs> no. And the worst part is, like, normally when you put a picture in a magazine or something like that, it goes out of circulation yeah. eventually. This lives in perpetuity, my friends. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is on the record of uh, human history. <laughs> there are some things that you just can't erase and uh you know you just have to be okay with that sometimes yeah like yeah, that's that's it it's just like what are you gonna do you can't do anything about it you just drop it and go on that's that's it exactly like for example the tower of pimps x-ray and vap yep things that are uh flint coal <laughs> things that are said in jest that don't really stranger you know too. right have any basis in any sort of like I'm going to make a real comedic connection and this is going to be a thing that actually comes to pass and we're going to make this whole conglomeration out of it. No, it's just something stupid that they would like, you know, I think it would be really funny to say. Yeah. And it just doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. But sometimes, but when it does, holy crap, yeah, you end up spawning a whole new cartoon show at the company. Yeah. Let's go ahead and kind of segue into those. 
Um, because after the successes of Red versus Blue, obviously, and then Ruby was really starting to kind of take hold, mm -hmm. there was a third animation show that started to spring up. Yeah, that was uh, it was actually while we were at the old studio at uh, 66 down mm -hmm. south. Um, Jordan had this idea. Uh, Jordan Swears of RTAA uh, fame. He had this idea for, you know, the show. He wanted to take the X-Ray and Vav characters and make a show out of it, but he wanted to do it in the style of RTAA. And he right. just kind of do it like that. So he went and pitched it to Matt, and Matt was just like, I like it. We should do, like, something else with it. You should get Patrick to draw it. And so... <laughs> I mean, I love just getting volunteered for stuff. It took, like, a year. It's, I mean, but that's a great recommendation. Like, oh, seriously? Yeah, it's just like, let's have, like, Matt, like... Matt Hollum going like have Patrick do it it's just like what oh uh, yeah yeah absolutely sir, yes sir yep, I'll get right to that mm -hmm. and then yeah sure enough and then we just slowly built this whole you know world mostly like it's a lot of self-pleasing stuff like it's not not in the way of just like the jokes that were said like in the first season like because the first season was really heavy on the referential like just jokes for Achievement Hunter right right but in terms of the art it's just like we're self-serving as hell because it's just like, oh, remember all that cool stuff we loved about cartoons when we used to watch them? Let's put it in our show. I was going to say there are there are definitely a lot of references, not just to our own stuff, but to oh, yeah, no. other old cartoons. I mean, anyone who's ever seen any Gendy Tartakovsky animation ever instantly recognizes a lot of the art style that goes into the show. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, and, it's a lot of Gendy. Uh, a lot of the old like Craig McCracken. Stuff. Yeah, Craig McCracken. Um, a lot of the old Nickelodeon stuff, Cartoon Network, um, just, you know, very rarely old Disney because we were all poor kids and couldn't afford the cable box. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really fun that you now have an opportunity to take a lot of those things that you love and mash them together with our own property. And, and suddenly it becomes a fairly successful cartoon show. Yeah. And it's just like, what the hell? Yeah. I'm glad everybody liked this. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, here's the thing. It's always great to believe in yourself. Oh, yeah. But but it feels so good to get that validation. Like, seriously, so good. And now you've been going through the second season. Now we're uh, it comes back next weekend, correct? This coming weekend. It does, yeah. It's coming weekend. It comes back episode six of season two. Oh. Where we learn that. <laughs> I am so very, very excited. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, even like that's the thing. I have total access to be able to watch this stuff beforehand. <laughs> I am totally able to admit that, but I don't because yeah. I want to see it when it's done. I'm such a huge fan of the stuff that we make that I'm like, I, I, I'm fine waiting. When it's done, it's done. The first season of Ruby, mm -hmm. I refused to read the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> but, like I was like. It was a battle because I was just like, I should read the scripts because that's my freaking job. <laughs> right. You kind of need to know I what you're going to draw. I to see the episode. So it was just like, okay, I'm going to go over these guys. Hey, what do you need drawn so I don't have to read the script? We need this. Sweet. Done. Later. <laughs> I'm going to try not to piece that together with what I already know. Yeah, it took me about like two months in that I was just like, nope, I need to read the scripts now because I can't. <laughs> I don't know. What's yeah, going. the strategy not working so yeah, well. It wasn't great. Re <laughs> read your scripts. Read your scripts. <laughs> so then you mentioned Ruby. We can kind of work backwards through the production schedule. What did you start working on Ruby with? <clears throat> in Ruby, it was a. Uh, it was kind of funny because when I first came in, uh, the producer and Monty at the time already had a, a concept artist like mm -hmm. on call. But she was over in, uh, I want to say she's in Singapore at the time. Um, her name is Eileen. Out of reach. Or Eileen. Eileen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, out of reach, basically. She couldn't be in house. Uh, beautiful artist. Like, you can find some of her work in the original concept art arts for Ruby on her DeviantArt page and online. Oh, so, yeah, nice. you want to go check those out? Go for it. Um, and so she designed, you know, the four major ones and, you know, uh, Juniper as well and a few others. And so they basically got me at the beginning to be like, hey, can you fill in all the other spots? Like, uh. can you do the rest of the characters? Right. Do background art. Can you do props? Can you do um, what else? What else? Uh, set props. Just every bit of art that would go into it. And it was just and at the time, I didn't know that it was just like, we're going to have you in 
come in and you're just gonna make concept art and to me this is my first studio job by the way all right i have never been to any other studio this is it it was just like I just know that you guys can tell me what to draw and I'll draw it. Like, that's how it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, this is the arrangement here. Like, like this was all a learning experience to them, too, because they had just started, you know, this major move into animation from RVB. Because mm-hmm. um, let's face it, RVB is nowhere near traditional animation. Like, you have no need for any drawn cells at all. No, no, not, not whatsoever. Like, not since that, like, I think it was, like, Japanese 2- 2D uh, short that was on the DVD. Oh my god, I totally fucking forgot about that thing. Uh, beautiful one. It's available for download on the Animation Studio site. Really? Uh, yeah, in HD. Huh. Wow. <laughs> it's there. It was just like... Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I really had no idea what I was doing, but luckily neither did they. Or what you were getting into. <laughs> or what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. And so at first it was just like, character. No, not even that. It was like, tree. <laughs> bush pile of trash and i was app- no and, and none of this was like oh my god it was all like just yeah yeah, yeah. keep <laughs> pumping it out man you're doing great yeah i was just like i was so excited um <laughs> uh, like it didn't matter what they asked me to draw i was like fuck yeah i believe at one point monty had asked me to make an engine <laughs> to try and figure out how the engine would work based off of the dust that we have in the show so actually engineering the engine to make it work inside of our cars in like our the combustion engines. Yes. <laughs> okay. Like both of us were idiots. <laughs> because one in my head I was just like Jesus fucking Christ why, but okay let's do it. Yeah. And and in his brain it's just like why do we need this? We don't need this at all. We don't see inside the cars. We don't do anything with the engines. Right? We There's no to- story but- purpose to have this information other than just to have it. No reason to have it. But we were both, me and Monty, just curious. We were just like, what does it look like? And so I drew it. And it was just an engine. Nice. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> uh, you've never seen it and you never will. <laughs> but it was something that we enjoyed creating just because we're both idiots and we're just creatives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because why the fuck not? Yeah, and that, yeah. and I mean, honestly, that's where a lot of the weapons end up coming from. Oh yeah, no, no, it's just an amalgamation of just stupid things smashed together, and then all of a sudden. Are there any of them that you've designed that you're kind of especially proud of? I like Sun's weapon. The the shotgun, yeah. uh, nunchuck bow staff. Yeah, that one's a fun one. I guess it would be three section staff. It doesn't really break down into nunchucks, does it? No, it does. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it has. Uh, each, each weapon usually has three modes in Ruby. <laughs> awesome. I cool. love this. This is my favorite part. Please tell me. <laughs> each, ep- each weapon has three stages in its own construction. Mm-hmm. There usually is a close range, medium range, and long range. Mm-hmm. Or a melee, gun, and alternate melee. Right. So in Sun's case, it is get a pair of nunchucks... Get rid of the chains and now put them together end to end, and you have the bow staff. Right. Okay. Now, break it in half. Cool. All right. Then, put both of the nunchucks together, and you have the shotguns now. So you're going bam, bam. I see. <laughs> and then the other one, which is just the nunchucks, but the nunchucks can also just shoot the hell out with the chains. The chain really has no restriction almost right let's go wherever the hell it's, it just, it's a magic flowing chain yes yeah so yeah that that alone is sun's weapon like and sun is like a tertiary character it makes me so happy just how much thought and care and detail has gone into every oh. inch of that world oh yeah no i mean like when i first started no i didn't have that mindset at all it was just like cool i can get you know what i think is down but now, after, like, especially after he, like, just drilled it into me, now I have, like, the engineer's brain going on and, like, all this other information. I'm just like, no, we're doing it this way, and this is how we're doing it, and this is exactly how we're going to do it in order to make it this good. Does right. at work? No. Fuck. You kind of have this new mechanical knowledge that you didn't really have before yeah. to go with the creative artistry. And so then art in movement... Yeah. becomes a little bit easier. It creates this nice, beautiful little mesh of, mm-hmm. you know, just this knowledge is coming together to make something that people seem to think is cool. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
like uh, I was talking to Austin, uh, one of the anima- one of the other animators the other day, and he was uh, doing a little bit of Penny's fight scene from an upcoming thing, mm. and she was hitting some guy in the stomach with a hammer, <laughs> and he was sitting there trying to get the velocity right on oh, yeah, the yeah, way yeah. the hammer just comes into the belly, and then how long it sits there in the belly yeah, before impact. pinging him off into <laughs> yeah. the exactly, yeah. and it's like man, there are. Real, like, physical mechanics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And you think, I mean, like, you know that is obviously the case, but it's w- awesome to see it in action. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, the animators, like, holy crap. Like, talk about talented assholes. Like, because they have to have, like, so many different things and rules already in their brain mm-hmm. to make, you know, art. And, like, in terms of the hammer thing, and I believe you meant with Nora. Yes, I did. <laughs> you said hammer, and I was just like, you got a hammer? <laughs> it's like, when do we get fitting a hammer? Why? Uh, yeah, no, they have to think about, you know, weight and, like, action, follow through, a punch, and, like, all this, you know, how things work. Mm-hmm. And they have to deconstruct everything into their head. And, you know, you might not see it at first because they're just like... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're just so wowed by the animation. But when you really look at it, you're like, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, exactly. There's no magical floating body. Like magical floating chain you can kinda get away with, but Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't make up for a person that's like suddenly ten feet off the ground and you don't know why. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. So then um again working backwards. Have you done any work on Red vs. Blue? Yes I have. I art directed the last season of Red vs. Blue, season thirteen. Oh really? And I will probably be doing fourteen as well. Maybe Oh, I'm excited for that. Oh, me too, buddy. Mm-hmm. Cause after that finale have they talked about what it's going to be? 14? Yeah. Sort of, kind of, but I don't know for positive, so, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so what What all did the art directing for season 13 entail? Just, like, picking out locations and such? Uh, it was picking out locations. Well, no, 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 here's the thing. Uh, it was more of – because Miles, Miles had, like, the locations roughly in his head. Mm-hmm. Like, it was for the stuff that was purely, like, animation mostly, like their own standalone scenes, like the uh, the prison ship. And the amazing fight scene between the two floating oh, yeah, yeah, pieces yeah, on the lava yeah, yeah, yeah. freaking pool. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I call that? It was just like Red Crystal Canyon or something like that. Because it was just like, it was me and Miles sitting in a conference room going like, all right, we have this big ass battle coming up with like, it's the last one. What are we going to do for it? Well, we have to put this in a cool setting and like, just make it awesome. Mm-hmm. How about we make it in a lava area like that, you know? episode three of star wars and we were just like that's a cool visual shitty movie but cool visual we got (laughs) hey listen sometimes the best ideas come from (laughs) the worst places absolutely it's like wait no what if the planet itself is kind of like alive what do you mean well instead of like lava we could put crystals everywhere like it's and we could see it like going like and it would be like vibrating and living and stuff like that uh the planet wasn't really alive but it was just one of the things we were just like what can we make it look you know, to make it look lively and to make it feel like mm-hmm. this is this near entity that this, these people are on. Like it's a living, like, because we have these floating platforms and this like energy surrounding the planet. Yeah. So there's clearly something more going on. Yeah. Here. And so we had to figure out, you know, what that wouldn't tell, what the hell that would look like. Uh, I love that, that stacking process of ideas where like, here's my base idea. Yeah. Oh, I love that. What if we threw this it's, on? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And if we threw this on, it would be even better. And like the energy yeah. builds. And by the time you get it all the way up here, it's so much better than any original idea could have been. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I love collaborating with like any of the guys like Carrie Miles and Gray and stuff like that. And Jordan. Like, because we're always just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I love uh, there's an old adage that says you should always be the least talented person in the room. Absolutely. <laughs> and I totally like whether it's true or not, I always feel that way because especially over at the company and it really helps you stay on your A game. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes and and also you learn more that way. Mm-hmm. If if you're humble about it, you're going to be able to take in information a lot better. Anybody will learn, you know, from everybody else around you that's like contributing as well. Uh, and it just builds you up as a creative and you know it's a great process and then on top of that you learn the strengths of other people you learn the knowledge bases of everyone else around you 
and and it becomes a lot easier to like here's an idea i'm going to bounce it over here and then i know that it's going to get rebounded over there exactly yeah if i talk about kung fu shit then jordan is going to be like oh i love kung fu stuff and he's going to run over yeah exactly and then you and you get that excitement building and you get that like just collaborate effort together and it's it's mm -hmm. freaking fun yeah so what do you do outside of work i work <laughs> Uh, no. You have a Twitch stream of your own, correct? I do have a Twitch stream of my own. Uh, don't ask me what it's called because I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. There will be a plug for it down in the description. Uh, Yay! <laughs> yeah, every once in a while I Twitch and I do uh, commission work. I rarely do freelance work anymore because I have no time for it, basically. Uh, yeah, because RT just takes up so much of my stuff, um, mm -hmm. which is great. Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah. nice to be able to, to not have to go like to two or three other jobs and be like, I just have to you know make it and blah, blah, blah. instead i could just yeah. get a one job and be perfectly fine commission art ends up being more beer money than bill money <laughs> For most of the time yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> uh but uh so like are you a movie guy i see you're you clearly are with the uh back to the future poster yeah. behind you there yeah you know favorite movie of all time is back to the future it's the nice really? default movie Everybody has that one movie that you can be like, oh, yeah, in a casual conversation, be like, what's your favorite movie? And it's like, oh, Back to the Future, uh, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, Wrath of Khan, blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> no. Trust me. You are in good company, my friend. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the decorations on my wall. You are in good Freaking company. Freaking nerd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, Here's the thing. When I moved to the new place, mm -hmm. I ended up having less furniture than I remember. <laughs> and so I kind of had to combine sets. Uh, this was downstairs in my living room, and this is was what was upstairs in, in my old set. But I also had, like, a dresser and shit like that to take up a lot more negative space. Right. So... Yeah. 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 What are you going to do? I'm still filling stuff up. If the camera was facing that way, you'd have much more interesting stuff to look at. There's, there is like, there's a skull, there's like test tubes, and like, uh, oh, there's a femur. Uh, <laughs> and like, but there's a bag of golf cl uh, clubs. Yeah, behind. yippee. I get the old white man entertainment back there. Sweet. <laughs> Oh, my good gravy. Uh, but there was other big recent news coming out of RT Animation, going back just, uh, to the work stuff a little bit, about a new collaboration coming up. Yeah, us and Playboy, we're getting together. No. Uh, oh. <laughs> Trust me, I believe we'd have some very good interpretations on those buttons. It'd be a very interesting thing to do. Let's get John Kay to do it. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> I'm just imagining Halo armor pinups. Oh, God. I want that so bad now. Oh, why did I think of that? Miles has the armor. Let's get him to do it. <laughs> we'll just dress you the set real it. quick with a nice bare skin rug and then just have him lay on top with the blue helmet right over his crotch. Just perfectly placed. Oh. Oh. Here's the thing. Mm. We actually have two full sets of armor. One red and one blue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love when you can just hear an idea being born, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I was referring to the one with the... Uh... Federator. Yeah, Federator. Yeah, we're going to do some stuff with Federator and the cat bugs, as it were. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how much we've announced. I know we're, you know, we've been saying that we're going to be working together and stuff like that. We, yeah. the, uh, there was the lovely poster. Uh, poster, yeah, which you can buy on the RT site now. You're welcome, Emily. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, hey, I love that freaking poster. I would chop, I would hawk that oh, thing even if it wasn't our own. I don't own. get my own posters ever. I, really? Not the ones I draw. That's kind of... No, I never get them. But I did get the cat bug and orf one. Because that oh. one signified a moment for me. Because I was just like, I got to be on the forefront of us happen, happening to collab with another st animation studio. And I got to yeah. be the one to draw the announcement. I'm going to get it. <laughs> That's a big first step. Like, I mean, for a 26 year old, only like two and a half years into the industry and ha being able to get that kind of opportunity is, you know, for me anyway, it's nothing to be like, ah, it's, you know, it's a goal. It's one of those things where I was just like, holy crap, I'm very, very lucky to be able to do this. I'm going to make sure I remember this. <laughs> Here's $20. <Yeah. laughs> 
I totally hear you, man. I, I don't know. Like, I have a hard time. Is it because you don't necessarily want all of the things that you've drawn because you've drawn them and have just so much experience with them? No. I'm curious about it's, this. It's a weird uh, – I, I, I heard somebody else say it, but they mentioned it was a Van Gogh disorder uh, or Van de Gogh disorder, mm-hmm. however you want to say it. Van Gogh. Van Gogh, if you will, <laughs> um, where you you never really like your work. In fact, sometimes you hate it. Like mm-hmm. you, as an artist, most of the time you're one of your your own worst critics. Like you're so harsh to yourself because you are the one creating it. You don't see what other people see. You don't see. Right. You see all the def, the the defects within your work, and you know where you fucked up. You see where you did good. You know over a period of time, that takes time to learn. Like why other people like your stuff. I've gotten to that point where I'm just like, I will never. I will probably never enjoy my own work. The same way as other people do. but i will enjoy the way other people enjoy it and so yes that's where i get my high from is just like i don't get it but i love that you get it and so that works for me there's part of me that feels like that may be the healthier route because it keeps you from ever getting the ego exactly i hate the ego among artists because it just doesn't make any damn sense to me because mm-hmm. doing this kind of work is so hard. You have to work really hard to get in any kind of position in, you know, in animation and in, in the entertainment, let alone being an art director. Right. Like, it's it, so it's, many hours and so many... Hours and hours, yeah. And it's just one of those things. Like, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll never be able to like my own work, I don't think. But I yeah. do love the hell out of other people loving it. I mean, yeah, there is absolutely that actor thing that most people say. We're like, I can't watch my stuff till three years. I can't watch till five years later. I can't watch it at all ever. You know, I and it's one of the where you either have to kind of let go of that, especially if you are one of the YouTubers that makes your own shit, because then you have to look at your own dumb face for the rest of ever. Hi, YouTube me editing this. Exactly. Enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. You better uh, because you're going to be looking at me for a long time. And it's you, like I said, you either come to deal with it or you just, I don't know, go to a happy place long enough to deal with it and then don't think about it anymore. I really don't know how you would be able to succeed in something like this if you weren't eventually able to get over it, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird because artists are such, <laughs> for lack of a better term, like strange people. Mm-hmm. Like, it's person to person. Like, sure, they're groups that have, like, similar qualities within them, but the way people deal with, you know, liking their own art or not liking it is so, like, far and few between sometimes. Because just, like, I hate my work. I love my work. I hate doing it. I love blah, 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 but I hate blah, blah, blah. Like, it's... Yeah, it's this huge uh, spectrum of... Yeah, yeah, of just a lot of different people dealing with, you know, that in their own way. But yeah. And there are some people who feel that way, like multiple ways about different videos. Like, oh, this thing that I made was probably one of my favorite things, and I can actually stand to watch that. I mean, I don't actually suck in this yeah, thing. No. Like, All the way down to uh, that fucking thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, X Ray and Vav, I love the hell out of. Not in terms of my work, but I'm like, I did that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I finished the thing. <laughs> and, like,. And, it, and people seem to like and it. And people seem to like it. And I know what the hell it looks like. Like, the where are the t-shirts? <laughs> X-Ray and Vav is one of those shows that I don't have to think about as hard about the design going in. Mm-hmm. Because that one is my own style. Like, I made it. And so I dictate a lot of that work. Right. And so that's already in my head. And so all I have to do is just put it down most of the time. Sure, there's still stuff to figure out, like how it fits. But when you have the rules in your own head about how it should, you could make it work. Absolutely. As opposed to Ruby, where I had to now learn this whole different way of doing things and suddenly had to change this whole different aesthetic. I can make it, but I'm not as confident in it as I am with X-Ray and Bev. Mm-hmm. Now I am because I've been doing it for two years or whatever. And right. I'm into it. Perfect practice makes perfect. Exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah. You just practice, practice, practice. That's that's the original rule for any artist is just practice. Yeah. So, yeah. So, technical question. Go for it. What programs do you use? Programs? Yes. Um, at work, I use, well, I work in at home, I use Photoshop CS6, mm-hmm. and that's it. Really? Well, just for drawing, yeah. For recording, I use OBS for, like, yeah. my capturing, but 
Other than that, it's just Photoshop. And your I, tablet? Uh, at work, I have a Cintiq 21UX, which is one of the older ones, but it's goddamn beautiful, and I love it. Yeah. It is very, very sexy. You got it on a nice arm. Yeah. It goes right over here. It's pretty damn sexy. At home, I have a borrowed tablet. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> hey, look, as long as it gets the job <laughs> done, am I right? <laughs> yeah. And so it's just like, I like working at the office. <laughs> it literally, like, it cuts my time in half to work at the office. Right? Yeah, I'll bet. Like, drawing on a screen or just drawing directly on paper is so much, so much better. I was going to ask, how, like, the one that you have at the office, you're able to draw directly on the screen. I, are you able to deal with that disconnect? Like, that is the hardest thing in the world for me. I can, I can switch between the two. One just takes longer. Right. Like the one here that I have, it takes a little longer to be like, okay, I is here, pen is here now. Uh huh. And, and then gonna, we're going to. Now uh, we're going to try and make it connect. Oh, okay, there I got it. Okay, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. it just work. Uh, okay, good. So that's not just me. That's, that's like a thing that actually exists. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, people hate going from like a Cintiq to anything else that doesn't have a screen because it sucks ass because you're just like and my coordination is gone <laughs> <laughs> completely yeah uh, i mean you know you get i imagine that there are some people who are like oh that's the only way to do it and you probably are doing it for way longer than anybody else and i commend you for that <laughs> I not mean, i said the cat i'll yeah. stick to good old-fashioned <laughs> paper thank you kindly uh, uh, and i'll draw my little stick figures and be good to go <laughs> Oh, gosh. But anyway, so I think we've come to the point in the show where um, I've always enjoyed the Inside the Actor Studios method of ending on a brief little questionnaire. So I, too, have a reappropriated version of the Proust personality questionnaire, and it goes a little something like this. Pat, what is your favorite word? Just word? Yeah. Perpetuity is a pretty good one. Mm. Uh, a lot of good syllables in there. Egregious. Ooh. Egregious. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. What is your least favorite word? Judicious. I hate the legality of it. Mm. Mm. It reminds me of government. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Man, that's, uh, that's too easy. What sound or noise do I love? Percolating coffee maker. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Or... Um, best part of waking up as they say <laughs> as this one company says that is not sponsoring me so i will not say the name of it uh <laughs> starbucks man <laughs> give me coffee uh let's see or the other one is the other one's more creative though oh uh sawing wood handsaw against wood hmm. i don't know why i like a little like <sighs> it's relaxing fair enough Sounds like my snoring. Yep. There you go. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Sex noises. <laughs> ah. Uh, uh, what hero or heroine do you identify with the most? No judgments here. What hero or heroine? I mean, I mean, I'm glad you give the option. Yeah. What about for the trans heroes? Exactly. Wow. <laughs> we are an all-inclusive show, if nothing else. <laughs> I like it. Um, probably Peter Parker. Hmm. It, it's I know it's a classic one, but it's one of those things where it's just like came from a broken family. I came from a broken family, and you know, learning through really really harsh lessons in life. Uh, and yeah, smart yeah. kid. Yeah, exactly. Well, hmm. <laughs> you try to be. You try to be. Switch it between the two. So yay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> what villain? Mm, yes, what villain indeed, I wonder. Mm -hmm. The Lobe from Freakazoid. Ah. <laughs> I love Freakazoid so much. Oh, that was one of my favorite cartoons growing absolutely. up. Absolutely. It had so many randomly just brilliant actors on it. Just Like, that was oh. Steven Spielberg just told to go. Dude, no, yeah, it was just like... And Paul... Paul Rudd. Paul, no, not Paul okay. Rudd. That's Ant Man. <laughs> That's uh, Paul. Um... Paul Dini? No, not Paul Dini. That's uh, Batman. I know. I think it's the same guy. It might have been Dini and another 
guy. That, Bruce Tim? No, not Bruce Tim. That's Batman. That's also Batman. <laughs> <laughs> not Freakazoid. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. No, I totally get it. We oui, bonjour. Lobby, we oui, bonjour. Yeah, I'm totally right. Absolutely. What would be your superpower? Uh, I know the superpower I've always wanted. Um, and it absolutely just derives from the art thing, too, I guess. I want to instantly make an image that's in my head just appear. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. And then be like, I'm done. I like that a lot. What concept do you need? Oh, that one? You mean this one right here? Like, here's the thing. That is so hard to do. Oh, yeah. To to, to properly translate what? what's up here to somebody else, like, much less to paper. Oh, yeah. Like, imagine how well you would do at just pitching things. <laughs> I have this idea. Oh, right. It's right here. I have this other idea. The mind printer. Exactly. <laughs> Men talk. Ah, the mind take out. Woo! Uh, what would be your super weakness? Super weakness? Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. Oh. <laughs> what turns you on? Creatively, spiritually, or emotionally, <laughs> or whatever? More butt stuff. Ah! <laughs> what turns me on? Uh, what gets your wheels going? What gets you creating stuff? Uh, I just love seeing people create new shit. Just, I like the aspect of somebody just being like i made this today hmm. i just made it and now i'm gonna show you yeah here you go i'm i'm proud enough of this thing that i want other people to see it yeah i love that i'm just like yes keep creating because like the world is so not i mean like we're so small we're, we're so within ourselves and like our but our capacity to think of otherworldly and out there stuff and you know just make up shit that's amazing like hmm. that thought process is not a thing that you know that's just like oh yeah everybody can do blah, blah 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 to actually have the creative people come out and bring all these cool new ideas to the world the things that we didn't freaking think about it was just like holy crap why didn't we think of that i love that it just brings on so much new stuff we are a learning and evolving you know race this is what we're made for we're made to you know go and explore and think of new stuff and dream and imagine and i love that that gets my yeah. dick so hard <laughs> <laughs> wow what a very beautiful sentiment <laughs> so what turns you off the opposite people mm. telling other people to not create i hate that i hate any bit of that because you can do a critique one or two ways Mm -hmm. you can go that's really shitty you need to stop or you can go this part right here this was really good you should now do this with this part so we can make it even better right that's the right answer to that you do it's the it's the yes but theory yes but no <laughs> no yeah it's just i hate people telling people you can't mm -hmm. like or you shouldn't or, or you don't sh or just any negative aspect to not creating like mm -hmm. no don't do it and it's just like why why the hell would you tell somebody to not do that or you can't do that you're literally telling somebody and pointing out their role to them going like you now as a human being are not capable of doing this one thing this thing that you worked for? Yeah, the thing that you have some sort of love for right now for whatever fucking reason? No, you can't do it. Stop. Like, I hate that. that that's not yeah. good. So what other talent, other than the one you've obviously been gifted with, would you, would you like to have? Uh, that I would like to have? Yeah. I would like to... Oh, well, no, I've been trying to get more in, or, well, back into music again. Mm-hmm. Like, I miss playing in the jazz band and singing for them and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. I was going to say, we really didn't get into a whole lot of younger stuff, but you do seem like a musical man. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I was a lead singer in a jazz band back in high school uh, and into some kind of the college age. And we did pretty well, played clubs and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And hmm. I want to do more voice acting stuff. Like, I'd love to further that part of my career because it's just... Like the butcher? Yeah. <laughs> That that whole 
a voice acting thing is just so much fun to me, and it's just so like. Out can of we thing. can we talk to the butcher? I am not the butcher. <laughs> this is Adam Ellis. Oh really? I it's... thought that was you. No, no, the Russian guy. Yeah. The oh, uh, you were the waiter. I was the waiter. Yeah, I was the waiter. Okay. The mayor. Look at me. I'm just confusing characters all over the place. It shows you how much I pay attention. I've actually done, like, quite a bit of voice acting for the company. Like, I just do a bunch of innocent, incidental people most of the time, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of people there do, too. It, I've just like, here's the thing. everywhere that I'm just like, hey, nobody can tell what I do. <laughs> one, would su- one would suppose that I would know that sort of thing. It is in the credits, after all. I don't care about those. When I watch things like that... I'm not looking for who played what or whose voice I can recognize. I'm into the characters. I'm into the scenarios. Them, and it's like you're you're into the show. Like that. Right. You're into, you're into the story, the lore, everything about the show. The creators to appreciate it. Not what I'm into though. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not Patrick. I hate you. No. <laughs> you were Adam. No. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what advice would you give to 13-year-old Pat? 13-year-old me. Shit. I was going to say think of a new career path, but I was like, nah, man. I, I love where I am. It's just a shitty... Because w- there's obviously a path to everybody's life. Like, it's mm-hmm. just what we do with things. We experience shit. I would probably be like, avoid this part if you can. Remember that part where you became a pastor? <laughs> At the age- yeah. You could probably avoid that and still be cool. <laughs> like with. <laughs> <laughs> Although now you can officiate people's weddings. I can. <laughs> and I can bless water whenever I want to. <laughs> Anytime you've got a vampire around, you're fucking set, uh, dude. I know. I mean, if I want to do a mass baptism, I just crack open a freaking fire hydrant and I'm like, mmm. That's a superpower. You're already prepared to be Van Helsing. <laughs> Van Patrick. Bless thee. <laughs> I totally want to see that now. Uh, what is something that only you do? That thing that I do? Mm. What do you mean? Like, What is something that you do that you believe that only you do? A weird quirk, a habit, a glick, if you will. Uh, I kind of know the answer to this, and it's kind of, it's not depressing or anything. I look at every bit of evidence I can when talking to a person. Like, I, I care, I don't care what people like think about me, but I care about what the other person is saying and how they're saying it and what the real reason is for them saying it. I see. Like, I I look at their mannerisms and I look at their like just way of speaking and the like where their shoes are pointing when they're talking to me and where their hands are positioning, just so I can tell what state of mentality they're at at the time of talking. Right. I don't know why I do it. It's just something that I kind of clued into, and I was just like, no. And so I would just I just put clues together about people a lot. I wonder, and go with me on this. Go for it. I wonder if that has a lot to do with your artistic ability. As someone who is capable of recreating both physical and facial representations of emotions, I would I you would, are more sensitive to those sort of things. Yeah, because like I mean, I create characters and I create people, and it's just one of those things where it's just like I need to deconstruct a person. Yeah, to, your, to create them. Your ability to art comes from your innate ability to be observant. Yeah, I mean that's if you're a good artist, you know how to observe. You know how to soak in. Yeah, you know, steel too. Like you're just like <laughs> every every artist does it. That's how you get good stuff too. Absolutely. Reference, reference, reference is your friend. It's it will never be your enemy. Take don't take finish, reference. Like I'm taking this art. This is mine. I drew it. Don't do that. No, but you take the reference. You layer over your style, and suddenly you've got a whole new thing that never existed before. Exactly. Case in point, I used to be like really really big into Penny Arcade, mm-hmm. and sure enough, some of my old art looks like Penny Arcade. That's just the way you work. That's the way our artists work. We take in a bit of information, then we move on to the next, and we take on the next one, and we just keep evolving. Mm-hmm. Just constantly learning. Mike over at Penny, Gar- Penny Arcade does the same thing. That's how he learned. He took from uh, Steven Silver and grew from there. Yeah. yeah. So what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> it's 
It's a lot better in my head because I'm just like, hey. <laughs> fuck nugget. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. There's a lot of good syllables in that. Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> fuck nugget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, where would you one day like to live? I would like to two places. Mm -hmm. One by a lake here in Austin. I would love to live there. Two, old Patty now, Scottish Highlands. Ah, it is quite beautiful over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can totally see that. Here's the thing. You can have a winter home and a summer home. Absolutely. I'd be like, I really want to be burning hot and feel like I'm in hell. Let's go to Texas. <laughs> now I want to be comfortable. Back to Scotland. <laughs> I was about to say, I kind of had that pictured in my head the opposite way, but whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and our last question here before we get out. If you had a choice, Pat, how long would it take you to respawn after you died? Ooh. Am I cognizant? Or am I, uh... The rules are yours to make up, honestly. Okay, okay, okay. If I am fully aware during the time, I will give myself one year of purgatory to chart out what I did. Mm -hmm. in the past life and figure out how to if i remember how to figure out what to do next in the next spawning i see yeah so a year yeah hmm. it also give me time to be super depressed and be like i'm dead i'm dead i'm so dead moaning myrtle style haunting every bathroom you can come back now what did i do wrong shit and then you go back <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it gives you time to go through all the stages of grief for yourself yeah, exactly <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that that uh, does us for this episode of Tim Talks. Pat, I hope you've had a good time. I sure as shit did. I had a great time, dude. <laughs> and, uh, but is there anything you'd like to plug before we get out of here? Extra. Oh. Uh. <laughs> that. That is, in fact, what we would like to plug before we get out of here. Go watch X-Ray and Vab. The new episode comes out on Saturday, and we really hope you guys enjoy it because, oh, God, it's so great. It's fun super fun send pat all your love when the new episode comes out yes and where can they find you they can find me on twitter at pat the wanderer yeah uh why did you decide not to go with your name because i don't really like my last name yeah fair enough sounds weird to me yeah, yeah. so at pat the wanderer it's been underneath him the whole time uh you can find me at tim leftwich on twitter uh the twitch his Twitch will be uh, in the description. You'll find a link there underneath Tim's topics. And just in time as the water runs out. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Subscribe here to youtube.com slash Tim Leftwich. Follow me at Tim Leftwich. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. If anything, we're like 57 minutes, but I'm not worried about that. <laughs> it runs up. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I don't want to talk about everything because then it sets up the return, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I kind of wanted to use this portion with you as a good way to kind of broadly stroke over RT animation. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I ever get somebody like Austin Just or Sean on, them in, so be like, hey, yeah, here's and then the you more get more technical of the aspects. Yeah, exactly. Here's how you do the modeling. Here's how we do the what taking what you've done and building on that and then attaching them all to the rigging. And you can get more yeah. and more technical as you get people who are more proficient in that. Because if I asked you the question, how do those characters get rigged up? Yeah, I'm just be like computer numbers right <laughs> exactly magic for all i fucking know but now there's a base for knowledge yes. for people who kind of want to yeah now they can siphon oh, off of it and be like oh what about this though yeah i didn't hear about him talk about this what about this other step exactly and yeah it'd be cool <laughs>